Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today on the podcast, we are looking at episode two of our five part series about taking the opportunities that are ahead of us. And thanks again to Bubba from Coffee News Break on Instagram for having a conversation with me to suggest this series. Check them out in the show notes. In today's episode, we're talking about using this time to grow your business in a substantial way. You ready? Let's do it. This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. So we're here. We're at a recession in all but name only. Arguably, of course, but everybody's talking about how challenging it is out there. We have labor shortages, we have economic problems, we have supply chain issues in the coffee industry, plus a whole myriad of other issues. And you might think that growing your business could seem impossible in this time. But folks, the problems our customers are facing, whatever part of the supply chain you occupy, those problems are changing and with changing problems comes a requirement to find new solutions. So sure, some of the old problems exist and we'll talk about that in a second, but there are new problems that are showing up. And if you're a small business owner, no matter where you are in the supply chain, this presents you with an extraordinary opportunity to define what those problems are identify what the solutions could be to those problems and monetize them. There are a lot of opportunities out there to do that. What's required in order for you to do that is for you to understand who your customer actually is. Now, you don't have one single customer. And in the work that I do with my consulting clients, and this has been extremely successful with my clients, is going to the effort of identifying five different customer personas and going into deep depths of understanding who they are. And we call this customer acquisition planning. The idea behind this is how do I acquire new customers? In the process of creating this customer acquisition plan or CAP, what we do is we define the problem that each of our customer personas has. The unique persona, the the unique problem that that persona has. Once we can identify what that unique problem is, then we can ask that person, what's the solution that you're looking for? When you base these personas off your real customers that already exist, it makes your, I guess, your investigations, your questioning, your research, however you want to term it, it makes it much easier. Because if you if you look at your customer persona and they're based off of your customer, you can start surveying the customers that are of that kind of customer and ask them, what problems are they having? What solution would you like to see for that? An example I can give you is, let's say we have a customer called Jenny. And Jenny is starting to feel the squeeze of her wage going up, but not enough to keep up with inflation. And she loves your coffee. She's a big fan of your cafe. But the problem is, that Jenny can't afford to drink the three coffees that she used to drink in your cafe. Now, you want to solve that problem and it may be difficult for you to figure out how to do that. But by understanding that Jenny has that problem, you can go and say, what would work for you? Because our instinct as business owners is to think, well, I'm just going to lose that customer. But no, it presents us with an opportunity there to come up with an innovative solution to a problem that Jenny's got that Jenny might not know about and I might not have thought about yet. And so when I say to Jenny, 
I, okay, Jenny, you can't have your three coffees here. I, I get that. How many can you have here? And what are you going to do about the third coffee? So is Je- has Jenny decided that she's just not going to drink that third coffee anymore or the second and third coffee anymore? Or is Jenny going to go and find a cheaper cafe to go to or a cheaper way? Is she going to have instant coffee uh, at the office? Now, by understanding what Jenny intends to do to solve that problem gives you the opportunity to take a minute, go away and think about some solutions that you could implement that you could suggest to Jenny. Remembering that Jenny is representative of a wide variety, like a big group of people. So there's not just one Jenny. You're going to figure out how to solve this problem for all the Jennies that come to your cafe. And then the idea is you go away and you think about it and you say, well, if Jenny's paying $6 for a latte right now, and I know that Jenny loves our coffee, why don't I see if there's a way that I could help her have that experience in her office the other two times every day with our coffee. Perhaps I can organize to have some drip bags created and I can teach Jenny and empower Jenny to make that coffee in her office without needing any kind of special equipment. I could also see if Jenny's interested in investing in that special kind of equipment or does she already have it? Does Jenny already have an espresso machine in the office, but she's too intimidated by it? Does Jenny have a capsule machine in the office? Is there a way that I could provide Jenny with capsules that has our coffee in it and keep her spending the money that she would have spent on those other two cafes, but just in a smaller amount? So As you can see, there presents an opportunity for you to look for the problems that your actual customers are having and find innovative ways to solve those problems based on the solutions that your customer might be looking for, not just assuming what they want. This, the key to all of this is having an understanding of who the Jennies are and finding a way to gain insight into the problems that they're experiencing from their perspective, not from your perspective. I hope this has been helpful. Um, In the next episode of this series, we're going to be talking about how to do things differently than the status quo. And this builds off what we spoke about today in understanding your customers. If you understand your customers It gives you the kind of confidence of knowing how you can grow your business based on what your values are and the problems that your customers have and how you can bring those two things together to create solutions that create a thriving business that never stops growing. So let's go on to the next episode. I'll see you then. Peace, love and peanut butter friends. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks friends, if you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.